Welcome back to Discrete Mathematics. Today we're going to start graph theory. So it's going to be a bunch of definitions and terms, and it's going to be like that for a few videos now, so get used to it, because graph theory, at least when you're starting out, is really just learning the lingo and the jargon, because graph theory is very different from other mathematics you've been doing. So what is a graph? Well, a graph is just simply a collection of vertices and edges. So we say that a graph G is an ordered pair VE where it's vertices and edges. So what I mean by vertices and edges is we represent vertices by dots. So there's some dots, we can label them if we want. So we'll call this A, B, and X. And we have edges, so we can put them between the dots. So this is an edge E, and this goes from A to X. We have another edge, um, we we'll call this edge F. This goes from A to B. We can have an edge D that goes from B to B. Uh, we might have an edge called Y that goes from B to X. We might have another edge called Y prime that also goes from B to X. So these are how edges work. So here's some more terminology for a graph. We have a nice graph there, A, B, C, D, E, and we have some edges between A, B, B, C, B, E, and E, C. So what does incident mean? Well, if you take an edge E, I uh, shouldn't call it E, take an edge X, we say X is incident to A and B. So X incident to A and B. B. So any edge is incident to two vertices. So it's basically what are the points connecting the edge. Now we have another term here called adjacency. So for as an example, B is adjacent to A, C, and E. So what do you think this means? Well, if we have a vertex, it is adjacent to other vertexes or vertices if it has an edge connecting it. So here we have an edge connecting B to C, we have an edge connecting B to E, and we have an edge connecting B to A. So what about A? What is A adjacent to? A is adjacent to only B because it's only connected to B. It is not adjacent to E because there is no edge connecting A and E. Okay, what about isolated? Well, D is isolated. And an isolated vertex is any vertex without any edges coming in or out of it. So that's why we say it's isolated, because it's just on its own. So these terminologies, or this terminology is fairly important for understanding some concepts that we're going to talk about. So, first of all, we should talk about the types of graphs there are. There are undirected graphs and there are directed graphs. In an undirected graph, we list every edge as a set of vertices. So, an edge AB is going to be the set AB. So, it connects A to B, so it's the set containing A and B. This is the same thing as the set B and A. They're exactly the same, because there is no direction. Order does not matter. But in a directed graph, order does matter. So we label these as ordered pairs. So we can also do the pointy brackets if you prefer those for ordered pairs. But in this case, when we say the pair AB, what we say is we say we have a tail coming from A and we have a head going to B. So it's an arrow from A to B. In fact, I shouldn't do that because that's the vector, but A to B. So in a directed graph, each one has a tail and a head. So for instance, what is this X right here? How we write that? Okay, X goes from C to A, so we write X is C and A. What about this Y here? 
Okay, well, y would be a to c. So these two are different. In this first graph up here, with this x and y, x and y would both be written just a c. And we just have something called a multiplicity of 2 for this. So this is multiplicity 2 for a c. Those should be in sets. So sometimes what we'll do is we'll just shorten edges. So we'll say that e is just equal to a b. And in an undirected graph, this is the same thing as b a. But in a directed graph, order matters. So this is not the same thing as b a. So sometimes we shorten them. So what we'll do is when we give an example, we'll say it's an undirected graph or a directed graph, or we'll show a picture with the arrows. So those are two types of graphs you need to know. Uh, proofs for them are always separate. So they might have the same proof structure for its properties, but they're always done as separate proofs because they are different objects. One has direction, one does not. Okay, so here's another big topic. I know we're going kind of quick, but we need to talk about walks, and specifically xy walks. And a walk in a graph is a sequence of vert vertices and edges. So it goes vertex, edge, vertex, edge, vertex, edge, and it just follows a path, or sorry, it follows a walk, and it goes from some vertex to another one. So here we want to go from x to y. So we take, we start at x, then we take some edge e1, we go to another vertex v1, we take an edge e2, we go to some vertex v2, so on and so forth until we get to y. And of course each edge just consists of the previous vertex and the next vertex. So e1 would just be equal to x v1. e2 would just be v1 v2, so on and so forth. So let's take a look. Let's find a walk from a to d. So this is how I write the walks and paths. So just a arrow d walk. So how can we do that? Well, we should probably label these a little bit. We'll call that E1. We'll call this E2, E3, E4, E5. So we start at A, and then we take E1 to B. And then, okay, we could take E5 to D and be done. Or we could take E4 to D. Or we could take E2 to C and e3 to d. So those are all possible circumstances. Now what we could do too is take a to e1, or a, a and e1 to b, and we could take e1 again back to a, and then we could take e1 to b, and then e4 to d. Because you can go back and forth in your walks. That is totally acceptable to go back and forth. So, walks have no restrictions as long as you follow a vertex, an edge, a vertex, an edge, it's okay. In fact, when I write out these walks, uh, what I'll do is I won't give edges names. I'll just say that an A to D walk is A, B, D, which means you go from A to B to D, and the edges are usually obvious. If it's not obvious or I need to spe specify which edges I'm taking, I will give them a label. But because it's not necessary, I won't. So a perfectly fine walk would be A, B, C, E, F, E, C, B, D. That is an A to D walk. Okay, so what is a closed walk? A closed walk is when you start at a, at a vertex X and you get back to the vertex X. So it's the same definition, except this Y is actually just X. That's the only difference. So if we say I want to walk from E to E, that's a closed walk. So Here's a walk, uh, E, C, D, F, E. That's a walk, or you could have E, C, E, or you could just write E. And this is called the trivial walk because it doesn't take any edges. So that is a closed walk. So those are walks. 
And a closed walk doesn't have any fancy name, it's just called a closed walk. Now, you need to keep this idea separate from the idea of a trail. And we're going to introduce a few different terms here, so it's going to get a little bit confusing because you're just... Individually, they're very simple ideas, but the hardest part is separating them in your mind and learning the terminology. So a trail is a walk without any repeated edges. So for instance, let's label E1, E2, E3, E4, E, I should put this right there, E5, E6, and E7. So let's do a trail from A to F. Okay, so what we can do is we can go from A to D using E2, and we can go to B with E3, C with E4, and F with E7. So we just went this way, this way, this way, and this way. So that's totally acceptable. We could do that. And that is a trail because we didn't use any edges twice. Okay. What if, hmm, what can we do here to make this a little bit more interesting? I'm not quite sure. Okay, so say we have the path E, or the trail, or sorry, the walk. <laughs> it's a lot of terminologies. I need to stop myself from saying the wrong words here. So we have a trail, well, a wanting to be trail, ECE. -E. Can we do it? In fact, let's do E, C, E, D. Okay, so we take E6, but then we take E6 again. So because we have E, C, and C, E, and these are both taking the same edge, this is not a trail. So we cannot repeat edges. Now, a closed trail is called a circuit. So for instance, let's go from A to A. We want a trail. From A to A, this is called a circuit. So we can do A, D, B, A, and that's acceptable. But what we can't do is we can't do A, D, A. That's not allowed because then we take E2 twice. So once we use this edge E2, we cross it off and then we have to find a new way. So let's say we took E5. Okay, well, we can't go back, so that means we have to take E6. Okay, so we should probably take E4. And we could take E3, but then we're stuck, so we have to take E1. So that is a circuit. Does not repeat any edges and starts and ends at the same place. So whenever I say closed, what I mean is that X is equal to Y, so the start is equal to the end. That's all I'm saying. So, no repeated edges. Not bad. What do you think's next? A path. A path is a walk with no repeated vertices. This is why when I use these words like trail, path, walk, I need to be careful with what I say because, well, they mean different things. And colloquially, colloquially in English, they pretty much mean the same thing when we talk about movement. So I need to be careful with this. So a path is a walk with no repeated vertices. So for instance, if we say I want to go from A to E, well, we could start at A, and we could go to B, and we could go to D, we could go to C, and then we could go to E. So we could call this A, B, D, C, E. Okay, what we can't do is we can't say A, C, B, D, C, E, because in this case, we have a C here and a C here, and that's not acceptable. So we can't do that path, or that walk. It's not a path, it's a walk. A closed path is called a cycle. So a cycle from A to A could look like A, B, C, A. And what you're saying is, hold on a second, A is being re repeated twice. but we don't count the start and the end to be a repeated vertex if we're saying I want a path that goes from A to A. We say, okay, the first and the last one can be repeated. 
that's it. So that would be a cycle from A to A. So we have A goes to B, B goes to C, and C goes to A. So what we do here when we want to find out our paths or our cycles, we instead take a look at the vertex and once we get to another vertex, for instance, let's say we go to D. Okay. So we circle that and then we say, okay, now I'm only allowed to go to B, C, or E. So which way am I going? Well, I can go to E. Okay, cool. So we do E and now I can only go to C. So we go there and now we take a look at our colored in vertices and we say, okay, what's available? I can't, I, I could go to A and end the cycle, but I definitely could not go to D because I've already used it. So ideally, actually, I'm not getting the color I want. Okay. Um, do this. We'll, we'll do this in green because we started here. Okay, so I can't go to E because we've already used E. You can repeat edges, by the way, but that would probably end up with you being at the same vertex. So, I can't go to E, I can't go to D, my only option left is either A or B, so let's go to B. Okay, so I'm at B now. I can't go to D because we've already used it. I can't go back to C, but I can finish the cycle and end up at A. So then we color in A again, and that is a cycle. Okay, so a lot of terminology, I know, but there's still one more piece we need to talk about. And this is the most intuitive and simple, so I left it for last. And this is connected graphs. A graph is connected if there is an xy path for all xy in the set of vertices. So what this means is that if every vertex is connected to every other vertex, then the graph is connected. If it's not connected, then we take a look at the number of components it has. So a component, which we'll call kappa of G, is really just the number of connected graphs, or connected subgraphs. But we'll talk about subgraphs next time, but this is just the number of connected subgraphs. So for instance, B, A, and F are all connected. So this whole part is one component. This C, D, E here is just one component. And this isolated vertex G is just one component. So C, D, E cannot branch out to anything, B, A, F cannot branch out to anything else, and G cannot branch out to anything else. So it's a three component graph. So K, G is equal to three. And here's the question, why does a graph have to be an X, Y path? Okay, so Let's take a look at the formal definition here. So suppose we have three points here and a path has no repeated vertex. So you can have something like this, something like this, something like this, something like this, and something like this. Okay, this is A, B, and C. So we can get from B to A, we can get from B to C, we can get from C to A, we can get from C to B, we can get from A to B and A to C. So we're good here. It's connected. What about this case? A and B. Okay. Well, we can't get from A to B, so it's definitely not connected. And in fact, we can see it's not connected visually. So that's kind of obvious. And here's another nice example here. Here's A. And, well, let's do this. Let's give it one edge. It's, clear, it's, clear, it's clearly connected. It has one component. And there's a walk from A to A to A to A to A. But the reason why we don't say a walk is because it's really just unnecessary. <laughs> and I, I know it's hard to say like, wait, he just showed us three examples to say it's unnecessary. 
Well, yeah, it's unnecessary, because if there is a walk from A to C, then clearly there's a shortest way to get there. And why would I go A, 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 C when I could just go A, C? It's totally unnecessary. Or let's say I want to go from B to C. So there's B to C. Uh, the quickest way to go is to just put A there. So B, A, C, that's a path. No repeated vertex. But instead I could go B, we can go from B to B, we can go from A, we can go back to B, go to A, A one more time, and then we'll go to C. And that's just, it's pointless. If we told a computer to do this to check to see if a graph is connected, it would be useless. It wastes so much, so much computation in a huge graph to say, yeah, check all possible ways. No, we just want to find a path. So that's a theorem maybe we'll look at, is do all connected graphs have a path from A to B? In fact, do all walks from A to E have a path from A to B? So for instance, here, here's what I want you to do. We'll, we'll visit this later, but I want you to prove it now if you can, that if there is an X, Y walk, and say uh, for all X, Y walks, for all X, Y walks, there exists an X, Y path. So try to prove that. In fact, I'm going to give you a hint. Um, you're going to start with a proof by contradiction. So you're going to have a proof by contradiction. And you're going to say, let W be a minimal um, Let's call this a minimal path, or sorry, a minimal path from x to y. Okay. And then what you're going to say is actually, don't, well, let's just call this a minimal walk from x to y. Okay, so you have a w, it's going to be a minimal walk from x to y. And this means that this is the shortest, the shortest walk from X to Y. And there's going to be two cases. Case one, there's no repeated vertex. So what happens in that case? Tell me what happens in that case. And then in case two, tell me there's a repeated vertex v i. And in that case, what should you do? If you get a repeated vertex v i, what are you going to do about that? Well, for an example, if I have, let's say I have this thing here. So this is just on my path some way. I'm going to leave or on my walk, I'm going to leave this way. So what happens is I go from here, and then let's take one down here, and I go to here, I go to here, and then I walk back up top, and I continue along my way. So I should probably do this in different color. Let's do it in this color. So when I get to some repeated vertex vi, which is this one, what should I do about that? And if I do something with that, what's the problem? So I just underlined a little problem if we have to do anything to that walk. And I'm sure you'll get a nice proof there. So honestly, if you can prove it, leave it in the comments and I will tell you if you're right, because this is a very good exercise and something you would probably see on a midterm. Okay, so that was an impromptu minor tangent. Let's do some practice questions on graphs with walks, trails, and paths. So we need to find a walk from B to D that is not a trail. So what is a trail? A trail has repeated edges. So it's not a trail, so we need to have one edge repeat. Okay, so if we want from B to D, so we should go from B to E to B to C to D. 
So we went in this manner. So we use this edge BE twice. Therefore, it is not a trail. Because in a trail, you cannot reuse edges. Now let's go from B to D at, with a trail. So we can't repeat edges, but it can't be a path. So we so a path repeats no vertices. But because it's not a path, we need to repeat a vertex. So we start at B. Let's go to A. So it has to be a trail, remember. So we go to C. And... Well, we need to go to D, but we have to repeat a vertex, so let's go back up to B. Okay, so we did B, A, A, C, C, B, then let's go to E, and then let's go down to D. So we have B, A, C, B, E, D. So we didn't use the same edge twice, but we used B twice, so it's not a path. Okay, and now let's find a path from B to D. Well, this is pretty straightforward. We go from B to C, and then we go from C to D. So B, C, D. Usually the shortest way is always a path. In fact, I'm pretty sure if you did my exercise I just gave you, you just proved that. So let's go from B to B with a circuit, but it can't be a cycle. So what does that mean? It means it's a closed, it's a closed trail that is not a closed path. So we, we, we have to only use each edge once, but we also have to repeat a vertex somewhere. So let's go from B to A and then A to C. Now we can't go back to B because then it would be a cycle. So we have to repeat a vertex somewhere. So we can't go back to B, so let's go to D. Um, that means we can only go to E I can't go back to B now because I still haven't reused a vertex. So let's go from E to G, G to F, and now we went from F back to G. So now we've used E twice, so it is no longer a path. And now we can go back to B. We never used the same edge twice, so it is a circuit, but we hit E twice, therefore it is not a cycle. So your answer here is going to be B, A, C, D, E, G, F, E, B, where E has been used twice. And if you take a look at the pair of edges that we use, we never use the same one twice. So that's another way of looking at things. Okay, that was one practice problem. And the next one is tricky. So if G, the graph G, is a pair of vertices and edges, where the cardinality of V is equal to V, so this just means the number of vertices, and the cardinality of E is equal to little e, so this is just the number of edges, and we say that G is simple. What does simple mean? Simple is loop-free, so there's no loops, it is undirected, generally it's undirected, and there are no multiple edges. So that means that if we have this, this is not simple. Instead, this is simple. So this is a multigraph, and this would be the simple graph. So we want to prove that 2 times the number of edges is going to be less than or equal to the number of vertices squared minus the number of vertices. So this is a little bit tricky to think about. So here, let's, let's take a look at this graph. There's three vertices. So how many possible ways are there to choose edges? Okay, well, what is an edge? When you take an edge, well, you take two vertices, so you take A and B, and you put a line between them. Okay, so how many possible ways can we do that? Well, that's just V choose 2. Just choose 
two vertices. Okay, so the number of edges has to be less than or equal to v choose 2. Because, well, for instance, 3 choose 2. How much is 3 choose 2? That's just 3. But, for instance, what if this was our graph? Well, it's less than 3. Okay, but can we get more? Well, no, because it's simple, so this is the most we can get. So e has to be less than or equal to v choose 2, which means that e is less than or equal to v times v minus 1 over 2 factorial, which is just 2. So 2 times e is less than or equal to v times v minus 1, which is the same thing as saying that 2e is less than or equal to v squared minus v. So if you looked at this question and you said, I have no idea where to start, you need to start thinking outside the box because this stuff is difficult. So I just presented you with a ton of terms today. In fact, let's go through all the different terms I went by. So you need to add all these words to your vocabulary. You need to add graph, incident, adjacent, isolated, meaning edges are incident to vertices, vertices are adjacent to other vertices, and a vertex can be isolated if it has no edges in or out of it. An undirected graph does not have direction. A directed graph has directions on each edge, so the edge AB is not the same as the edge BA because direction matters. It has a tail and a head. The tail points to the head. A walk is a sequence of vertices and edges. A closed walk occurs when your start point and end point is the same vertex. A trail is a walk that has no repeated edges, and a circuit is a trail with no repeated edges where the start and end point are the same. A path has no repeated vertices. A cycle occurs when you take a path that starts and ends at the same point. A graph is connected if we have an xy path for all of our vertices. So from any vertex, you can get to another vertex via some sequence of edges. And of course, we did some problems with that. And our last definition was simple. So a graph is simple if it is loop free and it has no multiple edges. So that was your introduction to graph theory. It is it's it's very dense so it was long but hopefully you have a nice grasp of these concepts and as always if you have any questions leave them in the comments below if not feel free to share this with your friends because they might benefit from this so you can check out trevtutor.com for more information or you can check out reddit.com r trevtutor and you can leave a question there See you guys next time.